Good morning, everybody. I am Jay Kumar, and I'll be your instructor for uh, the design patterns course. Little bit about myself. Uh, I'm an enterprise architect with about uh, 11 years of experience. These are our objectives. Uh, we want to make sure that we understood the object oriented uh, concepts. Uh, we learn about interfaces and um, general uh, field attributes like things. Let's talk about something which you may have seen many, many, many times. A banking system. A banking system will have some data and some operation and all of them can be clubbed together to show as entities. For example, a data item could be a savings account, a current account, uh, some sort of FDRD and some bank even offer a three in one, four in one kind of accounts, all those stuff. But almost uh, all those accounts will have some uh, common operations for example withdrawal transfer and deposit so what can we do we can take this data we can take these operations club them together and that's our that's our entity that's our object moving on so let's look at the object oriented uh, world and the principles that we should be aware of in those cases. Four important principles, abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism. And we'll talk about them one by one. An abstraction. I'll read this for you, but I'm going to give you other examples too. Uh, abstraction essentially is a principle of ignoring those aspects uh, of subject that are not relevant to the current purpose of uh, the discussion and uh, that allows us to concentrate on what is relevant. We use abstraction uh, in the development uh, to manage the complexity around a system and managing the complexity is one of the key skills. How do you manage it? One of the principles that you apply is that of abstraction. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're walking in a garden and um, it's a huge garden, right? And you see um, over a distance a figure. Uh, you're not able to see the exact features of that figure, but you can, uh, you can perhaps deduce that that figure is that of a, a human. Why? because let's say there are four limbs there are two hands two legs and a head and um, that figure is walking straight right uh, perhaps or standing and uh, by just looking at that uh, that figure you are able to know that it is a, a human if that human is little close you can also be able to tell whether it is a, a man or a, or a woman that's an abstraction for your purposes, you can only see the person and you can tell that it is a human and you don't need to know the complexity of whether that human is wearing spectacles or what color of uh, clothes uh, that human is wearing and all that stuff. It is good for you to just tell that there is another human being uh, on the garden. Let's zoom in. Let's say the same person goes to a um, eye clinic and wants to check the power right i if you know maybe he's also a software developer like us and has to go routine check every six months i hope you do <laughs> so for the eye surgeon's uh, perspective uh, what matters is the eye perhaps the retina and um, you know if it is um, dry or is it is it good how the power is can the person see it with one eye versus the other at that point in time that eye surgeon does not need to know about what is the height of the person or weight of a person or uh, whether uh, uh, this person is um, um, suffering with a backache maybe very common in our world um, that's irrelevant so what is the level of abstraction for an eye surgeon the eye and it doesn't matter, uh, the other aspects do not matter. So when you think of abstraction going forward, I want you to think of this. I want you to think for a given object or maybe in the real or virtual world, what is it that you are looking for? 
and that's your level of abstraction moving on here are the key concepts around abstraction it concentrates on only essential objects or uh, cl uh, essential cl characteristics for example for a for a figure in a in a garden you are only looking for are there four limbs is that person standing is that figure standing straight or walking on all four right um, is there a kind of oval shaped or you know circle shaped head and that tells you that that's a human right perhaps it may not even be human in some case it may just be a, a some sort of statue but you know that it is a statue of a human um, it allows you to um, manage complexity more easily um, as I said in case of an eye surgeon uh, eye surgeon wouldn't care about your backache he doesn't care right all he needs to focus is on the, is on the eye uh, there are many different views of the same objects the same human uh, we will just be looking at the outline in a garden but with an eye surgeon we will be looking at an eye same object multiple views an abstraction is always relative to the perspective of viewer if you were looking at that human figure it is your point of view when you are looking when you are an eye surgeon and looking at the human your point of view is different and therefore your level of abstraction is different let's talk about encapsulation encapsulation is really about information hiding you only tell as much as uh, needed let's say when we introduced each other today we only told about what's the name um, real uh, you know the years of experiences the expectations but we did not talk about for example did you have breakfast and what did you have in breakfast and uh, neither did i why because it doesn't matter right what matters right now is who are we and why are we here and therefore we are only exposing the information that is relevant in that context and we don't show any other information to the outside world it is likely that while you are listening to me you are having your breakfast but that's the complexity that you have to manage within yourself talking of which the information hiding allows you uh, to change the underlying implementation without telling it to outside world for example um, if you are feeling hungry you can eat without telling me uh, although I wouldn't advise it because it may uh, break your concentration but for uh, in, the, in the manner of speaking and as an example uh, it doesn't matter right that allows you to manage something that we'll talk about a ripple effect and very important uh, during the maintenance of the project that if it is at a le right level of encapsulation you should be able to change the underlying uh, implementation internals of your package or an object or a class without affecting any other world for example uh, if i want to take a uh, most of us may be driving a car right uh, in a car what is the um, information that you get maybe the the speed with which you are traveling or the engine speed with which it is happening that's a level of information does it ever tell you how is it measuring the speed where is the actual sensor for the speed mounted no it does not so therefore because it is only showing you the speed and because that's what is important for you even if the uh, different car has a different mechanism of measuring a speed and different places where the sensor can be mounted it doesn't matter to you you know where about where to look for a speed a speedometer and that's about it other things are irrelevant from the perspective of the of the driver now let me let me uh, put it in another perspective and also tell you that the guys who will uh, manufacture the sensor will not have to worry about how the information is presented to the user right whether where is the speedometer mounted is it digital or you know manual that analog style and all that stuff it doesn't matter from the sensors perspective what it will give out it will give out probably a voltage level if it is an electronic sensor and that voltage level will be converted but what is the level of encapsulation there the level of encapsulation is only giving out the voltage level the user of that sensor does not need to know how the voltage is getting computed it doesn't matter and therefore you can replace one sensor with another if the specifications match that's the advantage of being 
using encapsulation now all i'm giving you are the real world example because i'm i'm going with uh, the basis of everything in the real world can be transferred into object world uh, virtual world um, by way of representing it and key concept in the encapsulation are um, we uh, combine the behavior and the package structure together to make those objects independent. They only depend on the information that is exposed and do not care about any information that is hidden. And how do you expose that information? Perhaps by having an interface. And that is where when you write those objects, classes, right? It is important to consider the visibility modifiers and be careful about what do you make public versus what do you make private versus what do you make package or default visibility. 